Here we have a problem on compound interest. This will give us a chance to see how logarithms are used in the real world. So my problem is, suppose I have $1,000 in savings. The first part, how much money will I have in 10 years? The interest rate is 5%. This is the nominal interest rate, compounded annually, monthly, daily, or continuously. For part B, I want to know how long is it going to take my money to double if we compound annually or continuously. My formula is going to be given by the amount at time t. t is going to be measured in years. We're going to have our initial amount, a0. I have in here, this is 1 plus r over n. r is going to be the interest rate given as a percentage. I divide that by 100 if it's given as a percentage. And then n is going to be the number of times we compound per year. n times t, that's the amount of time we're measuring at. n is the number of times we compound per year. So n times t is going to be the total number of times we compound in that period, the total period of t years. So first, let's just do 1 through 3. And then we'll talk about where the formula comes from. So in part one, we're doing it annually, which means n is equal to one. We only have one period for compounding per year. So I'm going to have my initial amount of 1,000, one plus my interest rate's 5%. So I divide that by 100 to get 0.05, and then divide by one. The total number of compounding periods over 10 years is going to be 10. We only compound once a year. We put this in the calculator, and I get 1629. Okay, we go to monthly compounding. Okay, in 10 years, the initial amount stays the same. We're going to take our 0.05 now and divide by 12. And then the number of compounding periods is going to be, we compound 12 times a year, and it's going to be over 10 years. So we'll have a total of 120 compounding periods. Put this in the calculator, and I get 1647. And we note we're actually making more money if I compound monthly over annually. I go to daily. n is equal to 365. Okay, banking year would have 360, but we'll stick with 365 here. 10 years, we have 1,000 for our initial amount. I have 0.05. I divide by my 365, which is my n. We're to compound 365 times a year. Figure that out. The number of times we're going to compound total is going to be 365 times a year times 10 years, so 3,650 total compounding periods. I put this in my calculator. I get 1648.66. And we notice we made some more money over compounding monthly, but it's not much more. Okay, you might wonder, is there a limit? And we'll see that yes, there will be a limit. Okay, but first let's talk about where the formula is going to come from for one through three. So think of it this way. We'll do it for just annual. So in this case, I'm just going to go from year to year. Okay, so I'm going to start off with an amount. At t equals zero, there's no interest yet, no time has passed. My total is going to be 1,000. When I get to t equals 1, well, we're starting off with the 1,000 we had from before, but now we're going to throw in some interest. What's the amount of interest? We take our initial amount of 1,000, multiply that by our 5%, and then our total is going to be, take my original amount, because we're not going to spend any of it, and add in the interest. Now, if you notice here, I can factor 1,000 out of this, so we'll have a 0.05, and factoring 1,000 out of 1,000 is going to leave me with a 1. So I'm going to have 1,000 times 1.05. Let's go to t equals 2. We're going to start off now with this 1,000 times 1.05, the initial amount from before plus the interest. The interest on this amount is going to be just take this amount, multiply it by 5%. So that's going to be 0.05, 1,000, 1.05. 1, 
when I add these two together, look at what happens. Well, I can factor out 1,000 from each of these, and I can factor out a 1.05 from each of these. What's going to be left? We have the 0.05 from here, and here when I factor out the whole thing, I'm just going to be left with a 1, which means I'm left with 1 plus 0.05. But if you notice, that's just 1.05, and multiplying is going to turn that into a square. So my new amount at t equals 2, 1,000, 1 1.05 squared. Notice the 2 matches up with the exponent. We go to t equals 3. Same idea. 1,000, 1 1.05 squared, my initial amount. To get the interest, we multiply by 0.05, and then when I add the 2 together, we do the same trick. I factor out the 1,000, 1 1.05 squared from each term, and I'll be left with a 1 plus 0.05, which is going to bump that up to 1.05 cubed. And we can go on and on like that. So that's where my formula comes from for compounding annually. Putting the ends in there, well, for the inside here, that's just the definition of how we use nominal interest. There's no explanation for that. That's just the way banking works. And then for the exponent, that's just changing the number of periods we do per year. We look at continuous compounding. All right, so we have our 10 years, $1,000, 5%. The formula for continuous compounding is going to be take your initial amount, take your rate, if it's in a percent, you divide it by 100. Multiply by the amount of time. Now you're going to raise e to that power there. So in this case, we'll have the amount of time 10 years is 1,000 times e, 0 0.05 times 10 is just going to become 0 0.5. I put that in the calculator and I get 1648.72. You notice that this is going to be 6%, 6 cents better than when we use compounding daily. So the upper limit on how much improvement you can get by compounding on shorter and shorter periods is going to be hit when we do the continuous compounding. Let's look at our second part, doubling our amount to $2,000. So and assume same initial amount, same um, interest rate. For annual, Okay, we're going to have our formula AT equals 1,000, 1 plus 0.05 raised to the tth power. So N is equal to 1 here. So we're looking at, I want to get to $2,000. So we let that be equal to our formula, and we want to solve for T. Okay, well, first step is to move the 1,000 to the other side. So we divide by that. I get 2 equals 1.05 raised to the tth power. Now you may say, well, how do you solve that? That's the whole point of logarithms. Logarithms let you pull exponents out of your equations. So I'm going to apply natural log to both sides here. On this side, I'll get a natural log of 2. On this side, I'll have natural log of 1.05 raised to the tth power. But remember, our rule says, for any logarithm, if you have an exponent on the inside, you can bring it out in front. Okay, this is nice, because now I have t in terms of natural log of 2 and natural log of 1.05. Okay, I divide that out, we get to here, and then my answer, once I stick things in the calculator, is 14.2 years. Let's see what happens with continuous compounding. Okay, our formula is AT equals A0 e to the RT, where R is going to be divided by 100 if it's given to us as a percent. I have 2,000 equals 1,000 e to the 0.05t. We divide both sides by 1,000. Gives me 2 equals e to the 0.05t. Okay, again, don't panic. The whole point of our logarithm is to get our hands on the exponent. So I applied natural log to both sides. Natural log of 2 stays as it is. Natural log and e, remember they're inverse functions, so they cancel out. It's one way to think of it. Or I could think of it as I have a natural log. I could pull the exponent in front out to here. And then that's going to leave me a natural log of e, which we know is equal to 1. Either way, this is going to collapse down to 0.05t. t is then going to be equal to natural log of 2 
over 0.05, and that's going to be 13.9 years. So now if you compare, if I do the compounding continuously, it's slightly better than what I would get for the annual.